the Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous cheese food, Velveeta. Everybody goes for Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor in snacks, in sandwiches, and in hot dishes. And hidden in that swell cheese flavor are important nutrients from milk. That's why smart homemakers keep Velveeta on hand regularly to spread or slice and to melt for grand economical main dishes. Tomorrow, get Velveeta, the cheese food of Kraft quality. April in Summerfield, when nature can hardly contain itself. Tiny green blades are shooting through the sod. Fragrant buds are blossoming on the trees. And the great Gildersleeve has burst out of his office a little early. Take me out to the ball game. Excuse me. Uh, hello, Bertie. Your water department called. They just hung up. Oh? Your secretary, Miss Bessie. She said Marita Williger was in after you left asking about some reports. Think you better call her back? I don't think so, Bertie. By the time I got back to the office and got out the report, it would be tomorrow anyway. <laughs> so I might as well wait till tomorrow, huh? <laughs> Where's Leroy? He's been in the refrigerator for the past half hour. Huh? Better go pull him out before he freezes. <laughs> I have a surprise for him. Don't you go start eating too, Mr. Gilsey. We got stew for dinner. <laughs> stew. Uh, Leroy! All right, Leroy, but put back all that stuff in the refrigerator when you get through. That's my sandwich. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look, Leroy, got a big surprise for you. Here, catch. God, swell, huh? What is it? Open the box and see. Golly, a catcher's mitt. <laughs> Well, I promised it to you two years ago. <laughs> Just waiting for you to grow up and the price to go down. <laughs> <laughs> What a swell mitt. Official lead. Yeah, you bet. Autographed and everything. Um, who did A.G. Spaulding catch for, Leroy? <laughs> <laughs> he made it, Unc. Yeah, oh, he made it. Oh. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Unc. Hey, toss me that orange. Let's see how it works. Orange? Yeah, we shouldn't do this in the kitchen, my boy, but just once. All right, here it comes. Oh, boy, I'll never miss one with this big mitt. Uh, let me step back a little. Now, Leroy. Just one more. Let's well, just one more, then. What are y'all doing out here in my kitchen? Uh, baseball season, Bertie. Here, Bertie, catch! Watch out, Leroy. Leroy, don't you... Oh, Leroy, just look at that right in my stool. Leroy. Gosh, he must it, huh? Leroy, Bertie, don't lie. No ball playing in the kitchen. That's one thing, Bertie, don't lie. Ball playing in the kitchen and oranges in the stew. Yeah, well, we're sorry, Bertie. It's fine to be sorry, but no ball playing in here. This is Bertie's kitchen. This ain't no Yankee. Do you hear that, Leroy? Mr. Kelsey, what would you think if Bertie served you stew with oranges in it? The stew is in the now, Bertie. Bertie can't get dinner with oranges flying all around the place. This is Bertie's kitchen. This ain't no Yankee Stadium. Bertie, we Mr. Gilsley, do you know what this is? Yes, Bertie, of course. That's right. Bertie's kitchen. It ain't no Yankee Stadium. Did <laughs> you hear that, Leroy? No Yankee Stadium. Let's go play outside. <laughs> Here comes the curve, Leroy. Hold it, Uncle. Here comes Piggy with his bat. I get the bat, then. I'm first up, Piggy. Hey, look, Piggy. No bat. Come on, Piggy. Get in the game. We need a bat. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hey, keen mail, Leroy. Let me catch a few. Now, Piggy, it's my turn. But gosh, Uncle, I just got it. Well, who bought it for you? <laughs> well, Uncle. All right, you shouldn't be playing in the streets anyway. Break it up. Go home, fellas. Let's all go home. Okay, here's the mitt. No. I'll just catch a couple if you want me to. I get the bat, then. Here's the bat, Leroy. Pop pitch. Hey, Leroy, I'm up first. Are you up first? Why, you can't get anything, Craig. I'm up. I'll tell my father, bat hog. Now, Craigie. Go tell your father. Now, Leroy. I want a bat, bat hog. 
Now, Craig, that Leroy, that. He gave up his mitt, didn't he? You have to be a good sport and give something up, too. Okay, I'll catch them. You will not. <laughs> Pitch it across, Piggy. I Catch. Leroy, give me the bat. Why, for corn's sake. Step up to the plate, Mr. Gillespie. Plate? Where is it? Right there, the manhole cover. Oh, standing on it. <laughs> Got to go on a diet. <laughs> Let her come, Piggy. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Here comes a car around the corner. Oh, don't hit it. How do you like that? A home run. Stay with me and face the music. Well, Commissioner Gildersleeve. Oh, Mayor Terwilliger, we should have run, Leroy. Oh, hello, Mr. Mayor. Oh, this is the way you get your reports in. What do you have to say for yourself, Gildersleeve? <laughs> Gildersleeve, this is an outrage. Out here with the boys breaking windshields. Why, I nearly lost control of my car. You encourage these boys to play baseball in the streets? Oh, no, Mr. Mayor. As a matter of fact, I was just telling them they shouldn't be playing in the streets. Mm. I said, break it up, didn't I, Leroy? But gosh, there's no place else to play. What's this? Uh, that's right, Mr. Mayor. We don't have any place else to play. I mean, they don't. Nonsense, Gillespie. The city provides parks for recreation. Why, we build a number of baseball diamonds. They're always full. Oh? Yeah, the city leagues are always using the parks. Yeah, the big guys. Well, it looks like the big guys monopolize the city streets, too. What what are we going to do about this, Mr. Sleeve? Do about it? Well, oh, I'll pay for the windshield, Mr. Mayor. Well, I know that. You'll get the bill. Yes. But uh, what are we going to do about these kids playing in the streets? It's a deplorable condition. I quite agree with you. Good. Why don't you do something about it? Me? You're the one city commissioner who seems to have time for this sort of thing. So let's see some results. I didn't see any around your office this afternoon, Gillespie. Well, I considered this a more deplorable condition, like you said, Your Honor. Mr. Mayor, we have to get a ball diamond for the boys. Well, Commissioner? Well, I'll get it. Fine. Let's get it done, Gillespie. Oh, depend on me. Uh, and Mr. Mayor? Yes? When you get in the car, would you mind throwing our ball back? <laughs> It's on your mind. Well, I have something important to discuss with you, Judge. It must be important if you wanted me to give up my bowling tonight. What is it? Well, the mayor has put me on a special project. Special project? Mm -hmm. You mean at last he's found out the water department can run itself? <laughs> Now, Horace, this is no laughing matter. The boys in this town need a place to play baseball, and I'm going to see that they get it. We have to keep them off the streets. Wonderful, Gildy. When did you become so public-spirited? I broke the mayor's windshield. Uh... So I heard. <laughs> well, it wasn't very funny, Judge, believe me. No, I'm sure it wasn't, Gildy. I've never approved of boys playing in the streets. It's extremely hazardous. You said it. This town has long needed someone to direct the activities of our young people. You're right, Judge. I've often thought, what a fine thing it would be if Summerfield had a boys' club. Boys' club? And I stand ready to heed the call whenever the community looks to me. All right, Judge, I'm not asking you to take over. I just want some advice. The mayor's put me in charge. As I say, Gildy, anything I can do. Yes, yes. <laughs> Judge, you know the real estate situation. Who's got some vacant property big enough for a baseball diamond? Nobody in our neighborhood. Pieces of property that large are pretty scarce. But let's get out the maps and look. Maps? Oh. A lot of maps there, Judge. Well, cartography is one of my hobbies, Gilday. Let's see what we have here now. Hey, there's a big piece of property. Who owns that? I'm afraid that's out of the question, Gilday. That belongs to the Russians now. Russians? <laughs> We have the wrong map. Oh. <laughs> now, this is the map of Summerfield. Where? As you see, there aren't many large areas that haven't been broken up into lots. Wait a minute. What's that big vacant space right there? Why can't we get that? Well, that's underwater most of the time, Gildy. I'll have it drained. I've got the authority. I hardly think the mayor would approve, Gildy. That's your reservoir. It is? <laughs> yeah. Better not drain that. <laughs> a vacant piece of property that I handle. Happens to belong to an old flame of yours, Leela Ransom. Leela? Just think, Gildy, if you'd married her, you'd own it now. Uh, uh, yes. <clears throat> Let's see. It is big, isn't it? 
Not too far away, either. Third Street. Yep, might do. And I'm sure that she'd be delighted to have the boys play there. Good old Leela. But as a matter of policy, in Leela's absence, I usually take up property discussions with her cousin. Adeline Fairchild? Well, I'll take it up with her cousin myself. <laughs> Perhaps I'd better get my hat and go along with you. You've helped enough, Judge. Now you go bowling and try to stay out of the alleys, you old goat. <laughs> <laughs> Excruciating phase, you come in. Oh, thank you. I was just sitting here thinking about you. Well, I've been thinking about you. Mm, how nice. Come on into the parlor and we'll sit down and think together. <laughs> <laughs> I've already done the thinking, Adeline. Now it's time to act. Gracious, you say I'm so serious. Oh, this is serious. But nothing the two of us can't work out together. How interesting. Sit down. <laughs> now turn on the radio and get some dreamy music. So much nicer to talk with music. You don't have to talk so much. <laughs> uh, never mind the music. I'll do the talking. Throckmorton, I just love you when you get so domineering. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Adeline, you know that big vacant lot of Leela's on 3rd Street? Mm -hmm. You suppose she'd turn it over to us? To us? Mercy? Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful lot, for, <laughs> wonderful lot for kids, Adeline. Just what we need. Well, I don't know if Cousin Leela would let us have it if she knew what we had in mind. <laughs> What's wrong with your own property? My property? Oh, that's out of the question. Not even enough yard for Leroy. And we have to keep our boys off the streets, Adeline. No girls? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a baseball team in mind. A baseball team? Goodness gracious. Well, of course, Grandmother Fairchild had eight boys. Had eight? Hmm, wait a minute, Adeline. <laughs> Understand me. <laughs> the neighborhood kids need a place to play baseball, and I thought Leela's lot would be just the thing. Oh, well, I think that's a marvelous idea, Throckmorton. You do? Well, great, great. I've been watching the boys playing in the street, and I've just worried myself sick that something terrible would happen. It is. I mean, uh, it is pretty dangerous. That's why I'm behind this thing, Adeline. They even organize a boys' club. An idea that came to me just a little while ago. Well, you just go ahead and use that little old lot any way that you see fit, and I'll write Cousin Leela about it. She'll be proud of you, Throckmorton. And so is your little Adeline. My little Adeline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about that dreamy music now, huh? Let's relax and have fun. Oh, uh, Throckmorton, I just love you when you're so carefree like a big jolly bear. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, you. <laughs> nice music. Lovely. Mm -hmm. You know, it was funny how I misunderstood you. It is a silly thought. You and me and a baseball team of our own. <laughs> I don't know a thing about baseball. You don't? Well, I'll be glad to teach you. We could make quite a game of it. Oh? Well, what's the first thing you do? Well, let me see. The first thing to do is to try to get the first base. Oh, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a minute. Homemakers tell us that one of their hardest jobs is to keep getting variety into meals. For example, those daily vegetables. They do get a little monotonous when served the same way day in and day out. And here's where Kraft smooth melting cheese food Velveeta comes to your rescue. Vegetables taste new and different when topped with a glorious Velveeta sauce. Here's the easy recipe for that sauce from the Kraft kitchen. Just melt one half pound of Velveeta in the top of a double boiler. Then stir in one fourth cup of milk. 
There you have a grand, smooth sauce packed with a rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor, ready to add gold and goodness and variety to almost any vegetable. It works wonders with leftovers, too. With Velveeta sauce, you can glamorize leftover bits of ham, chicken, or seafood with a taste-tempting dish that's elegant enough for guests. And don't forget, Velveeta for main dishes. It helps supply muscle-building protein, milk minerals, food energy, and vitamin A. And for snacks and sandwiches, nutritious Velveeta spreads or slices and toasts perfectly. Insist on genuine Velveeta when you shop. You can depend on Kraft quality. Let's get back to things in Summerfield. Ever since the mayor lit a match under the great gilder sleeve, he's been rushing around town like a ball of fire, promoting his project to keep the boys off the streets. Hello, Bessie. Commissioner Gildersleeve. I won't be back to the office this afternoon, Bessie. Working on my boys' club. And now you call Uncle Charlie down at the reservoir and have him take the city weed cutter over to that big vacant lot on 3rd Street and cut those weeds. No, that's all, Bessie. Any mail? Uh, a bill for the mayor's windshield. Uh, <laughs> well, goodbye. Probably when the mayor sees what a good job I'm doing, he won't want me to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> Clerk, we'll take three more fielder's gloves. Very well. You pick them out, Leroy. Oh, boy. Will that be all, sir? Yeah, let's have two of those Louisville slugger bats. The short ones. We're going to have a club. We may as well do this thing right. Gosh, who's going to pay for all this, huh? The mayor? The mayor? Uh, I hardly think so, Leroy. He's watching watching the budget these days pretty close. Election year. Well, you don't have to pay for it, do you? Just leave it to me, Leroy. I'll raise the money. You take the equipment out of the field. Okay, we'll go out and practice. So long, us. So long, Leroy. Let's see. 1850. Well, local merchants have been kicking in pretty well. Just need a little more now. Hello, PB. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this afternoon? You can give me a donation of $5, PB. $5? Just a minute. I'll go out back and see if Mr. PB is in. You're in, PB. <laughs> and I need the money for a very worthy cause. <laughs> Buy baseball equipment for a boys' club I'm organizing. Well, that sounds worthy. You bet. Nobody has turned me down, Peavy, and your $5 will help. Well, I've already made my bank deposit today, but let's see what we have in the cash register. No sale. Business hasn't been exactly rushing today. Not a stampede, if you know what I mean. Yes, I understand, Peavy. And I'll give you what I have. Yeah. Here's two dollars I got from Mrs. Clark this morning for that markdown hot water bottle. <laughs> Fifty, seventy-five, one hundred, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. Three dollars and thirty-four cents. Were uh, you planning on buying anything, Mr. Gildersleeve? Me? Well, you might give me some cigars, Peavy. What the heck? Fill out the five dollars with El Lobos. The El Lobos? I think you have room in your pockets for that many? <laughs> well, you better make it good Havana's, Peavy. The mayor's coming out this afternoon to pitch the first ball. Oh, you're having a game this afternoon, Mr. Kelly? Oh, sure. The first one. The kids are going to choose upsides, and we're going to officially open the field. Yeah, I see that. Well, see, we need an umpire. Why don't you come on out? Well, uh... We need somebody who can call him impartially, Peavy. And I've never known anybody more impartial than you. Mm, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I don't think I should close the store. You don't have to close the store. Have Mrs. Peavy come down and run it. She's done it before. Well, yeah, business always seems to drop off a little when I leave Mrs. Peavy in charge. <laughs> She has a habit of standing in the door and looking out, which isn't quite the way to get customers in. <laughs> well, Peavy, we'll miss you out there. Well, that's nice of you to say so, Mr. Gildersleeve. But you should get a great deal of satisfaction out of knowing you've helped put this thing over. That's very right, true. You bet, Peavy, because this is one of the most worthy causes you could ever support. And you're perfectly right there, Mr. Gildersleeve. And believe me, you'll never miss that $5. Well, no, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Your 
culture of Summerfield. Well, well, thank you, Clyde. Then you've heard... You bet. Great stuff, Commish. Well, I wish somebody had helped us out when I was a kid. Where I lived, the railroad tracks ran right through left field. Huh? If you timed it right when a slow freight went by, you had a home run sure. <laughs> Things are just about as bad here in Summerfield, Floyd. Yeah, I guess you could have used a freight about the time you broke the mayor's windshield, that eh, commission. <laughs> now, Floyd. But you're doing a great job, Commish. Well, it's really too big a job for one man, though, Floyd. All of us businessmen have to get behind it. Oh, I get it. How much you want? Well, Peavy gave his all. Another five will just about make it. Equipment and things. There you are. But if Lovey ever asks how much I contributed, it was ten. Ten? The cards wasn't running so good last night. <laughs> uh, well, thanks, Floyd. Now I'd better get out to the field. I want to be there before the mayor arrives. Hey, you may even get a raise out of this, Commission. The mayor might even name the diamond Gildersleeve Field. Oh, well, if the mayor should see fit to it. <laughs> Leroy, what are you doing here? You've been crying. I have not been crying. What's the matter, kid? Those dirty guys. Leroy, what guys? Those dirty guys down there on 3rd Street. They chased us off our ball diamonds. What, the new field? They say that's where they play ball, the dirty guys. Well, we'll see about that. Come along with me, Leroy. Okay. Hey, Kamesh, I'll go with you. I've been looking for a reason to close up shop all afternoon. Never mind, Floyd. I can handle this. Why did you let them chase you off, Leroy? They were great guys. Oh, well, come along, Floyd. <laughs> Wonder why Leela Ransom ever bought property over here on 3rd Street. I was born right on this street, Commission. Some of the best fighters in town come out of this neighborhood. The uh, best fighters? Uh-huh. Who chased you off, Leroy? One well, was a kid named Armstrong. Not Pug Armstrong. Pug? Oh, no, it couldn't have been. Must have been his son. Old Pug's with the fire department. Uh -huh. See? There they are, rocking our diamond. They chased all us kids across the street. I see. Well, we'll soon take care of this. They can't steal our diamond after all I've put into this. Yeah, I got five bucks in it myself. Go get your boys, Leroy. We're taking over. Okay, Uncle. Come on, kids. Come on, Yeah, I did. <laughs> Gang. Hold it, fellas. What'd you say, mister? What's the idea of you boys taking over this lot? What's your name? Well, it's Armstrong, but look, mister. You're just the boy I want to talk to. What's the idea of chasing these boys off this lot, Armstrong? Hey, you ain't Pug Armstrong's son, are you? Yeah, that's right. Well, what do you know? Where is old Pug, anyhow? Now, Floyd. There he is, coming up right behind you. Are these two fellas causing a little trouble here, are they, son? <laughs> You remember me, don't you, Pug? Huh? Lloyd Munson? I cut your hair many a time. Oh, sure, sure. I didn't recognize you out of the barber shop. <laughs> Who's your uh, talky friend? <laughs> What's your trouble, laughing boy? <laughs> well, uh, you see, Mr. Armstrong, I'm the water commissioner. Throckmorton P. Water Commissioner. I'm Ethan Gildersleeve. <laughs> I've gone a lot of work to line up this diamond for our boys. Mayor's orders. Yeah, Pug, the commission done a great job. Yes, sir. And your boys don't have a right to chase my boy. Boys off the lot. Yeah, we've been playing ball all the time here, way before it was ever fixed up. Yeah. Well, it belongs to our boys' club now. You understand, Mr. Armstrong? Well, if your club is taking over the property, I guess that's it. But it's a pretty lousy thing to do. We have to keep our boys off the streets. Sure. So your kids take the diamond, and what happens to ours? They have to go play in the street. Sure. Hey, Commish, maybe Pug's got something there. Instead of Leroy's gang just choosing up sides, why don't the two teams play each other? Well... Sure. What's wrong with that? Have a real game. That'll keep all the kids off the street. Well, that's a good idea, but I was just getting around to it, Floyd. Let me think of these things. Who's in charge here, anyway? <laughs> Sorry, Commish. Now, Pug, uh, Mr. Armstrong, here's what we'll do. Hey, Commish, look, the peeve. Well, peevy. Yeah, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, so you did decide to come out after all. Well, the more I thought about it, the more I didn't want to miss the game. Good to see you, peeve. I closed up, too. I didn't completely close, Floyd. I left Mrs. Peavy standing in the door. <laughs> You're just in time to umpire, though, Peavy. Hey, wait a minute. What's that? Huh? Well, the mayor. Well, get a load of him. An escort and everything. And look who's with him. Judge Hooker. Good. Well, Gildersleeve, gentlemen. Well, hello, Mayor. Two other good judge. Hello, uh, yeah, Mr. Oh, Armstrong. Uh, I, uh, I hope I'm not too late for the opening pitch. <laughs> oh, no, 
Oh, Mr. Mayor, glad you could make it. We're all ready. You've done a nice job here, Gilda. Yes, Commissioner Gildersleeve, I'm most proud and pleased. You've done a wonderful job. I see you're taking care of a lot more boys than I expected. Well, I decided to expand the club quite suddenly. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, I see you brought a photographer. Great idea. Well, the newspapers always want to picture the first pitch, you know. <laughs> all right, you young fellas, some of you get out there in the field. Yeah, get right out there, fellas. Yeah. Here's a new ball, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Gildersleeve, since you're behind all this, why don't you stand up at the plate and hit the first ball when I pitch it? Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. If you're sure you want me in the photographs. Uh... Get ready now, Gildersleeve. It's liable to come in there pretty fast. Oh, really? Well, I'm set to honor. Swarm it out of the park, Gildersleeve! I'd miss it if I was you, Commiss, unless you want to lose your job. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Floyd. Batter up. Play ball. Remember, Phoebe, play politics. Wherever the mayor throws it, you got to call it a strike. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Here comes. Lay it to a commence. Swing, Gilda. Oh. 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 Come on. Oh, first. <laughs> I win, Phil. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Well, here's the great Gilda Steve again very shortly. When the gang at your house asks for a handout, your smartest move, Mother, is just to set out some bread and Velveeta. Let them fix their own snacks with Kraft's nutritious, good-eating cheese food. Let them spread or slice the Velveeta thick. Toast it to a bubbling gold if they like. You can stand back and smile. For although you're being an indulgent mother, you're being very wise, too. That delicious Velveeta is rich in valuable milk nutrients, digestible as milk itself. So keep stocked with packages or the two-pound loaf. Get genuine Velveeta tomorrow. Hey, fine game, huh, Unc? Weren't you proud of me when I hit that home run? Well, yes, I was, Leroy. So was I. Just think if I hadn't, the score would have been 32 to nothing. Uh, yeah, you know, all the other boys were a little big. Yeah, too bad about the mayor's windshield. Did he make you buy him another one? No, but he was pretty hot under the collar, my boy, until my pal Pug came over and asked who my talkie friend was. <laughs> Good old Pug. <laughs> Seriously, folks, we're going to have a great boys club here in Summerfield, and it's a good thing for other communities to look into. And now is the time to do it. This very week, during National Boys Club Week, I know it's helped to keep Leroy off the street and out of my hair. <laughs> good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. Adeline Fairchild by Miss Willa Merkel. The show was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Neeson. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, Richard McGrand, and Arthur Q. Bryan. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Good night. Homemakers, here's the seven-minute solution to the main dish question. Have swell macaroni and cheese you cook in seven minutes flat. It's Kraft Dinner. Every box of Kraft Dinner gives you both ingredients for fluffy light macaroni with a fine cheddar cheese flavor. And the price of Kraft Dinner is so low that it costs only a few cents a serving. So tomorrow, for speedy, thrifty, delicious macaroni and cheese, get several boxes of Kraft Dinner. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. Thank you.